Hey everybody, today on Rado Runsu, we're taking a look at Sabika. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to Spain. Or specifically, the Albica Hill in Granada, which is the site of the Alhambra, which is one of the world's greatest fusions of architecture and poetry. And in this game, we are Islamic nobles who are doing our best to contribute to the construction and development of the Alhambra. I'm going to show you how it works today in a solo run-through. I am the yellow player going up against Yusuf, the blue player, who, instead of having their own player board, has a bunch of cards that basically emulates all the functions that another player would do. This game feels very much like you're playing a two-player game when you're going up against the AI. So, let's get going. How does it work? Well, this is a triple rondelle worker placement style game. At the beginning of the game, each of us have two construction, one merchant, and one poet. And we are going to, at the beginning of the game, put them on the various locations of the rondelles. And then, from that point on, we're going to be moving them clockwise around the rondelles, doing poetry actions in the, in the center, doing merchant Mercantile, mercantile actions with all the different cities um, out there in the center or doing construction -y stuff on the outer edge. And I am the first player. And so at the beginning of the game, I got to pick one of my four workers and get them to work. So what do I want to do? Well, there is a lot to help me make that choice in this game. As part of setup in a one or two player game, I'm using that side of the board. The other side of the board is for three or four players. There are four major poems uh, that could be earned that will score points at the end of the game, depending on which one you get. So, I do know these are out here, and these came from a big old deck of cards. So every time you play, you're going to get a different combination of things to really focus on. This one says, hey, if, if I end up writing this major poem, or I should say etching it into the walls of the Alhambra, then I can get extra points at the end of the game for each set of the three colors a poem, blue, red, and gray. So I want to do a lot of poems and, and all varieties of colors. If I end up snagging this one eventually, I get more points if I develop my storage capabilities. Because at the beginning of the game, we have very little storage and it fills up fast. So that might make this more attractive than normal. Let's see. This one is... Uh, right. Oh, for architectural balance. If I'm really going to focus on minor bits of architecture around the Alhambra, I want to do them in a way that matches colors to maintain balance in the the more I do it, the more points I could get. And then finally, this one is for working my way up the Sultan's Favor track. So, in this game, these are all good things to do. But in the in this game, if I can snag one of these poems, they become great things to do. But that's not all. There is a progress track that will monitor the five years, or maybe it's five decades, I'm not quite sure, that we're playing through. And again, as part of setup, three Sultan's Favors tiles were chosen. And in this game, the Sultan's Favors are... Or I'm not Sultan's Favors. Uh, Sultan's Requests are, hey, poetry. And then later on, specifically blue poetry. And then at the end of the game, arches and individual buildings. The, in this game, those three were chosen randomly from a bunch of other tiles. It would make uh, different things, different types of buildings, different types of things you could invest in more valuable. So in this game, all the things being equal... Blue poetry is where it's at because all three of these tokens represent scoring opportunities. So maybe right out of the gate, I should say, hey, my first action is going to be my poet worker who I can, at the beginning of the game, put into any of these spaces on the rondelle to start doing poetry. If I put her here or here, I can actually write a poem. And remember, there are bonus points to be had for poems, especially blue poems. But let's not also forget, there. if I write this poem, there are bonus points to be had for a variety of colors of poems. So, do I want to rush right out and write a blue poem to try and take advantage of that? Well... If that's the case, I should look a little bit more closely at what blue poems are available, I think. So there are three of them on display, and I mean each one of these could be a red or a blue poem. If I choose this card and write the red poem, that is a one-time bonus I get. It's just one and done, although you can reactivate it later. If I choose the blue side, that becomes a special power I have for the rest of the game. Like having to pay less money when I'm moving around the rondelle and other players are blocking me. Or this one, pay one dinar less each uh, time I carve a poem in addition... Ooh... In addition, earn an additional victory point for every poem. Well, 
That's kind of attractive. And this one over here, um, earn the city bonus twice. Oh, I see. When I uh, engage in trade with faraway cities, I get double bonuses. Okay. You know what? Here's the deal, folks. Blue poems are hot, hot, hot. This thing says, hey, get a discount whenever you try to carve poems into the wall. And it's blue. So I think that makes sense. How about... I have my first of four actions that I will do in this first year of the game. Remember, we take place over five years. I will come over here. I will send my poet to this space. I will um, lay the poet down to indicate that she has been activated. And I will do the actual action here, which is write some poetry. So I can pick, if I can afford it, any of these three cards or any of those four cards. Now, unfortunately, while I'd like to grab these, because hey, once I've got them, that means I have locked in a way to score a lot of points. The first one of these gray poems I would um, scribe onto the walls cost me four dinars. I only started with three. So I can't afford any of them. So I'm just going to ignore those for now. Hopefully I'll get to them later. I can ultimately have up to two of them inscribed, which means those are two ways to score points. So I'm going to snag one of these for the blue side. And yeah, I like this one for a couple of reasons. One, this one I'm going to have to pay full price, but afterwards I'm going to get discounts every time I do poetry. Um, but also, I forgot to mention, as part of setup, there are three random events that are chosen. We know what the current event is, and it's a bad event. This event says it costs one more dinar than normal to write poetry. Or not write poetry, but to inscribe it into the walls and arches and all that. So, it costs more to do poetry. This gives me a discount on doing poetry. It seems like this is a good one to snag. All right, and I'll, by the way, I also know that about midway through the game, that event is going to be replaced with this event, which says it's going to cost more money than normal. Normally, it doesn't cost any money, but now it's going to cost money when this event comes around to consolidate trade agreements with the different cities. So, but that's a little bit later. Heck, I might play this whole game and never engage in trade uh, because there are so many different things you can focus on, and I'm really eyeballing that poetry. So, I'm going to write this poem. So I'm taking the card, and there's actually, in this poem area, a nice little summary of what I have to pay to do this. First of all, it says I've got to pay money. How much money? It says that on the card. If this is... I, so I, it costs me one coin plus one more. Unfortunately, it's a bit more expensive in this game. In another game, that cost might not be there. Plus one additional for every blue I've already written. So, this is my first blue. It's going to cost me two of my three starting dinars. Alrighty, and then from that point on, if I write in the future, I get a discount on poetry and I also earn an extra point. So, this is the breakdown of what I have to pay. I have to pay two dinars. Ouch. There goes two of my three starting capital. Which, by the way, I should say, as part of setup, I was actually given two of these, and I had to pick one of them to determine what my starting resources were. Uh, as the first player, either way, I was going to start with three dinars. I chose this one, which gave me one gypsum, one wood, and one... I forget what this is called, but this is basically a resource that I've got over here that I can use to make the Sultan pleased with me. So I took that one rather than this one, which would have given me, again, another one of those stars... Um, one more dinar, and it would have given me a ceramic as well. But I had to choose one of them. I chose this one. All right. And um, so, I had to pay dinars. Next up, I have to... Because remember, this is not writing the poem. This is inscribing the poem. So I need to spend a basic building resource, either marble, wood, or gypsum. I have to give up one of those. And as a bonus, if I want, I can do a higher quality work by giving up a different one. Uh, you know, you can see this little not equal. So I have to do these, and if I want, I can add this. So because the more quality goods I use, the more points I get. Now, remember, I said I started with a gypsum and a uh, wood. They're over here in my storehouses. I've only got room for two more building materials unless I expand my storehouses, which is something I might want to do, especially because there's a poem that will actually um, give me more points for that. But so. At the very least, I have to use one of these to do this inscription, um, but I could do both. If I do just the wood, I'll score two points. If I do just the gypsum, I'll score one point. If I do both of them, I'll score three points. And remember, later on, once I finish this poem, I'll get additional points, uh, an additional point every time I do a poem. Now, by the way, I should say, this is going to be a blue poem. So it's going to get slotted over here underneath my player board. 
And you can basically see the reminder for the rest of the game that I get a discount and an extra point every time I do any type of poem, because uh, that is my blue poem. So I paid my money. What or both resources am I going to use? I think I'll go with just the wood, which gives me two points. So I started with five. Now I've got seven. It is possible to lose points. So you start with a few points at the beginning of the game. Um, I'll keep my gypsum though, because gypsum is the primary resource you need to build um, major constructions. You can see all those tiles up there. At the very least, you need a gypsum. If I don't have any gypsum, I can't build any of those. And those are incredibly powerful to build too. So to carve that poem, I spent two coins, a bit more than normal because of the bad event. I spent one wood. I now have this ability for the rest of the game. And remember, because of the Sultan's request, he likes poems and he loves, he doubly likes blue poems. So I'm pretty happy with that opening turn. And I am done. My poet is laid down to indicate she's not going to activate anymore for the rest of this day. And it is now Yusuf's turn. Now Yusuf has the same four workers as me and has these four little tiles that will randomly determine determine what Yusuf is going to do from round to round. So at the beginning of a round, these get shuffled up and we reveal Yusuf is sending out one of his builders. He's got, just like me, two builders, one merchant and one poet. So builder up. And we uh, there he has cards for each one of the three types of builders. This says where Yusuf wants to send his builder. He wants to send them over here into this space. Oh, that is exactly where I would go next. Because this is a space that lets you upgrade your storehouses. And remember, I was just talking about how upgrading storehouses is a good deal. A better deal than normal in this game if you get this major poem inscribed. But that is where he is going to send one of his laborers. So his laborer goes into this spot. Now, if I went there, I would do what the action is. Upgrade a storehouse. Yusuf goes there, which means he's blocking it. I could still move one of my laborers here, one of my builders, but it's going to cost me an extra buck because this is now an occupied space. Er, So I just got a little bit more expensive to come here. Now that's not all though. Yusuf says, hey, I'm going there and I am going to take the raw trade good in this area, which in this case is some clay. And uh, normally, a human player would have to pay a buck. Yusuf effectively has infinite money. So Yusuf will just take the trade good, thereby denying that trade good for me. We need these trade... We need to... First of all, we need to get the raw trade goods. We need to process them so that we can ship them overseas and get all kinds of lucrative trade contracts. But Yusuf just snagged it right out from under me. And then finally, Yusuf... Normally, a player can only do one thing at a space. Yusuf gets to do two. He's going to upgrade storehouses and he's going to do a minor construction. This sneaky, sneaky guy. So, because he's in this area, he has access to these upgrades. This one gives more storage space than that one. You can see it's got two. So he'll take this one. All right. And now this is not going to refill until the end of the year when we move on to, you know, year two of the game. So if I'd wanted it, too bad, so sad. Yusuf got it. If I want to get this one, I've got to come here. But Yusuf is kind of blocking the area and I have to pay. Basically, when you move into a given zone on the rondelle, you have to pay a coin to the supply for every other player who is already there. So now it's going to cost me if I want to get that one. If I want to get these ones, there was a dummy player. As part of setup, when you're playing a one or a two player game, there are, uh, or even a three-player game, there are some of these golden ones that are basically act to tighten up the board. So now, if I want to upgrade my storehouse, either I got to come here or here to get these ones or that one, and I got to pay an extra coin. And I'm already almost broke. Money goes so fast in this game. Uh, but anyway, so Yusuf did all of that. And normally that'd be it, but Yusuf has some connections. He's going to do a construction action as well. And then on top of that, he is going to get one point for every minor construction he has. Again, uh, a normal player goes to a space, they just do the thing at the space. Yusuf goes to a space and he does whatever the card says. So he's going to do a minor construction. Right. These are the major constructions. These are the minor constructions. He's got four to choose from, and his preference is whichever one matches what the Sultan wants. And remember, randomly, as part of setup, we found out the Sultan prefers arches and these freestanding buildings. So if any of these minor constructions are an arch or a freestanding building, that's what he's going to take, because they're worth more points this game. And wouldn't you know, okay, we've got some um, greenery, some greenery. And then over here, we have got a, uh, a freestanding building 
and we have got an arch. So he could take either of these. In a case of a tie, what does he take? He takes the rightmost one. If there were two here, he'd take the topmost. So he's going to grab this. And now, normally, a player would have to, um, it's listed right here, spend some building materials to do it. But Yusuf, he's just got infinite supplies, so he just goes on ahead and builds this. All right, so he is starting to collect. He's got a storage upgrade. He's got some raw goods. He also, as part of setup, he got a little bit of a bonus. He got to set sail and it get engage in trade with a city. So I haven't done any of that. He had one right from the get-go. So he's collecting all his stuff for in-game scoring. And then the last thing, remember, this card said, hey, after I'm all done, get a point for every minor construction I've got. He's got one, so he just scored a point. I'm still winning, though. I've got two points. Woo! Okay. Now I gotta ask myself, what am I gonna do next? It would have been totally to go get storehouses because of this, but now I have to pay and I say, nay, I am not gonna pay. So, well, ultimately I've got two workers or two builders who have to go on this outer ring and a merchant who has to go on this center ring. And the longer I wait to do anything, the more likely it is that these spaces are going to be gobbled up. This is the exact same thing you'd have. If I were playing against a human player, they'd be putting theirs out, and I'd have to be thinking, you know, I did save this gypsum so I could build. So maybe I should go on ahead and do a proper either major construction or a minor construction of my own. Now, if I want to put this on the board, I've got a couple of choices. I could put them in this one which says, hey, build a major or minor. Or there's one on the other side. Again, I could build a major or minor, but this one is occupado by one of the um, uh, dummy players, or one of these gold ones, which means I'd have to pay a coin. So, although, on the other hand, if I came over here, I'd have to pay a coin to get in, but I would also be able to get a raw trade good. If I come to this space or this space, I could get this raw trade good. Uh, some cloth that could later on be processed and turned into clothes that I could then send overseas. But the problem is, I'd have to pay a coin to get in here, and because I am a laborer, I'd have to pay another coin. I need two coins to get the full use out of this space. And since I'm a bit... Well, oh, so... I can still go there after I make some money. Maybe I should take a break and get some cash first. How could I do that? Well, there's a couple ways to get cash. I have two builders. I could be planning on putting a builder up here and getting this bolt of cloth, um, but I want more cash to do it. So my other builder could say, come over here to this market, where the first thing is I get two coins and then I can engage in two trade actions. And you can see all these trade actions down here that I could do. So that's a possibility. Um, and these are buying or selling things. I mean, heck, I could sell my gypsum for a little bit more cash. If I had something more valuable, like, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I could get cash that way. I could also get cash by sending my poet to either this space or this space, where I get three coins plus one for every two more poems I've done. Now, unfortunately, my poet is already done. Totally exhausted. Isn't going to be doing anything else this round. So... Um, I could give up one of my opportunities to work to do it. I can't use my poet. The other way is I can have one of my workers stay home in my workshop. If I tell them, hey, don't go out onto the rondelle, just lie down. That means they'll generate three coins for me, but I will lose one victory point because nobody sees all the exploits I'm doing out in the city. So, I mean, you know, these are prestige points, obviously. So that's a way I could get cash. Then I'd have three more bucks. I'd lose a point, so we'd be tied with Yusuf. But then I'd have more than enough money to come here, do the build, and... So that's pretty attractive, too. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, pal. You're not going into town. You're just staying home and you're making me some cash money. Big three dinars. And I lose one victory point and my turn is over. And you know what's really going to suck is if uh, he now sends to this space or this space and takes that thing that I was trying to save money to go get. Let's see what Yusuf's got in mind. Yusuf says, I'm sending out my poet. And so uh, Yusuf's poet is going to go to that space over there. And so boom. And, or, I'm sorry. And now this would normally be a... If a human player went here, it would say, hey, activate the power of a red poem you've previously written. But Yusuf says, oh, I don't care what the board says. I do what the card says, which is write a poem and then get a point for every poem written. So um, Yusuf is first up. And the way Yusuf goes when they write a poem is first they will write a minor poem. Then the next time they write a poem, they'll write a major. 
then another minor, then another major um, over the course of the game. And, um, you know, in normal circumstances, you could only write five poems because you've only got one poet and you've only got five years in this game. Although there are other ways that you might get a chance to write a few more extra poems along the way, like, say, that major construction over there. So anyway, Yusuf came here. Yusuf is going to write a minor poem. And uh, Yusuf chooses very simply by all these poems have numbers on them, so you can look them up in the manual if you need to. But Yusuf just takes the highest one. So Yusuf says, hey, I'm taking this. Don't care about the special powers. Don't care about the bonuses. Just taking this for myself. All righty, because um, that's going to count for in-game scoring as both a blue and a red poem for Yusuf. Um, so uh, Yusuf has now tied me up on that. And then Yusuf gets one point for every poem we got. And suddenly, because I lost a point, Yusuf is pulling the lead. But I don't mind because Yusuf left my other... Um, builder opportunity. I'm going to come there. I have to spend one coin to get in. Now remember, if I had actually written this poem, I would have to pay one less every time I go to an occupied space on the rondelle. But unfortunately, I didn't write that poem. I kind of wish I had now. So I'm paying one to get in, and then I'm paying one more to grab this bolt of cloth and putting it over here. Um, raw goods do not go into your storehouses. Each raw good has a special source. But once it becomes a, a trade good, once I process it, it goes into storehouses and occupies space. So I take that, and now I'm going to build either a miner, like what Yusuf built, or a major. And I think... It's going to be a major. Now, um, again, like over when I did the poem, there's a little summary right here of what you have to do to be able to uh, do these things. Same thing for doing buildings. Hey, to build a major, I have to spend one gypsum, which I have. Remember, I saved it. Plus, if I want to, after the plus, it's all optional. I can spend up to two different types of goods of the um, the marble, the wood, or the ceramics to get extra points. Now, I don't have anything else, so I am just paying the one measly gypsum I've got to build one of these. These are the first era um, ones you could build. About midway through the game, the, the uh, uh, any that didn't get built will go away, and then we can start building the second era stuff. So, but right now, I'm going to build one of these. And now, I've got a few choices. I might be inclined to build this one or this one because they're both arches. And remember, the Sultan's favor is arches. Arches are freestanding buildings. Yusuf built a uh, freestanding building. If I go here, uh, this is going to be worth points to me, extra points to me at the end of the game. But I got to ask, how much do I want those points versus how much do I want a specific benefit? Because each one of these gives me a unique benefit. Uh, this one gives me a couple of points, a couple of points. This one would give me one of any of the four building materials, which is nice for later, although it's a little too late. But hey, I could use it for more poetry later on. The other arch, this one gives me three coins So I, because I'm getting broke again. So I'm kind of tempted to take that one for the money. This one, if I take it, lets me ship trade goods. I don't have any trade goods. I've got raw, unprocessed goods. So it would be terrible to take that one. But here's the thing, folks. As much as I'd like to get those arches because they're worth extra points, I think instead I'm going to go for this one. So I paid one gypsum and nothing else. A gypsum is worth one point, so I scored one point. Hooray. I couldn't have pumped anything else in to make this more valuable. I have done this. This now gives me, it is a fountain, which it looks absolutely lovely. That's what it'll look like for the rest of the game. But there's no bonus points for fountains in this game. But this says, hey, do two things. First of all, grab a raw good off the rondelle and then process goods. So I just paid for a good. And this is going to let me grab another good and then process a good so I can start engaging in trade out in the open sea. All right, so there are still two goods on the board. The raw goods, anytime you ever, anytime you ever do an effect that gives you raw goods, you have to take them on the rondelle. If all the raw goods were gone, then I wouldn't have taken this because I wouldn't have gotten a raw good at all. So... I either take this cane, which could also be turned into uh, delicious sugar, or I take the other bolt of cloth. Now, here's the thing. Because I already have a bolt of cloth, I can't put another one. Whenever I would take one that matches what I already have, instead of taking it, I convert it, the one I already have and then leave the one on the board. So I'm not going to take that one. I'll take this one. So now I've got two raw goods, and this says, hey, I can process one of them. 
And I need to decide, do I want processed sugar or processed cloth? Because if I look out here, there are a lot of different cities I could deliver this stuff to. And um, the, the further east I go, the more money I have to pay along these travel routes. So I, And now this one has already been snagged by my opponent. So I probably want to come here because nobody's been here and I can get a, a royal seal. Or I want to come to this one. This would cost me one coin to go there. This would cost me one coin to go there. To Florence or Aragon. So they over here... Oh, this is upside down. They want uh, processed clay, which becomes the, uh, what are they called, amphoras, um, or, or you, know, uh, you know, pottery, or they want the processed sugar. So I could process the sugar and then gauge and trade here, or I could process the cloth and gauge and trade here. Now, this is a red city. This means this is a, a bonus that um, does that is, is like kind of once and done, but they're more powerful. These bonuses are generally less powerful, but they give me income at the end of every year. So by doing one of these right from the get-go, I will get income five times over the course of the game at the end of every year. And what's the income I'll get? I'll get a trade good, and I'll get a coin um, every year if I can establish trade with this city, and then also solidify or consolidate my trade. So if I want that oncoming income, I've got to consolidate, which is a, so a one-two step process. So now, I'm thinking about all of this because I'm trying to decide, am I going to process my sugar to come to this city or my cloth to come to this city? Well, there's another thing that can help me. Another objective card came out as part of setup, and again, there are a bunch so every time you play, there's going to be different ones that point you in different directions. This one that came out says, hey, get two points at the end of the game for every blue city that you're present. Plus one point for each blue city in which you are consolidated. So all things being equal, in this game anyway, blue cities are a bit more attractive than red cities because of that in-game bonus. So I think I want to get to good old Florencia. So that means I'm going to need some amphoras or some sugar, which means, coming back to me, I am going to process this sugar cane and make it some sugar. And that's what I got. Oh, but I'm not done yet, folks. Actually, oh, I did things out of order. I did things a lot of order. First of all, when I took this, I had to do this action first, which is curry the favor of the Sultan. Then I did these. I did these out of order. I'm sure Paulo noted in the subtitles that I was doing things out of order. So first of all, the favor of the Sultan must be addressed. And what's that about? Well, if we come up here, here's a Sultan track. Uh, we start off at nothing, but I get down to move up one space and give myself one coin or one more of these. I think, as much as I want the coins, I'm going to take one more of these. Because if I have these, that means I can um, ensure I keep the favor of the Sultan at the end of the year. The more of this you've got, the better. Plus, whoever's in the lead on this gets to be first player if they want, or gets to choose player order. So I could take more coins, but I still got two coins. But instead of coins, I will um, take... Oh, what is it called? It, the game actually comes with an excellent player aid. Summary of what all the icons are. Summary of all the actions you can... You know, the overall turn structure. And I believe those stars are... Uh, a prize? Uh, Perries? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to take... I'm going to call it a star because I do not know how to pronounce it. Okay. So that was it for me. And Yusuf is up again. And Yusuf says, hey, let's send my other master builder out. And so this one... Oh, it's interesting. They want to go to the exact same space that is already occupied. Players are never allowed to send one of their workers to a space they're already in. Uh, or I should say in the case where uh, the workers because you have two master builders on the outer ring. So I'm just supposed to draw again. And okay, the worker wants to come up here. And hey, uh, if Yusuf were a player, they'd have to pay two coins to get into this area. But uh, they've got infinite money. And it's not coins to the players who are already there. It's just coins to the supply. Yusuf just barges their way in, finds, oh, there's nothing to take. Too bad, Yusuf. I beat you to it. And now Yusuf wants to make a major building. And again, all things being equal, they will take whichever one they can that matches the Sultan's requirements. If there's multiples, they'll take the highest numbered one. That is this one. So they're going to take this. They don't have to spend any resources or anything like that to build it, um, and they don't get any of the rewards either. They just get her done. And this says, hey, after you're done building, just take four points. So you could imagine that they used, uh, to get four points, they probably used some ceramics and some gypsum to build the thing. 
one, two, three, four. Because a player could have done that. Could have scored four points off a building. And so that was it for them. My last turn. My merchant. And my merchant is ready to mercantile because I've got a trade good ready to ship to Florence. So let's do that. Uh, and, phew, I was going to say, if I wanted to come down here, I'd have to pay a coin. Because this is occupied. Fortunately, this one up here is not occupied. And now, here is an interest... Oh! Whoa! Wow! I, I, boy, it's, it's, it's like I planned this out so brilliantly, folks. Here's the deal. Remember, when my worker came up here, I paid a coin to be able to get this trade good. Um, it says one coin here. I know it's pretty tiny. You might not be able to read it. It says uh, workers have to pay one coin to interact with this. The merchants don't have to pay anything. This is a free spot for them. But you'd say, hey, the raw good is already gone, right? Well, so a merchant coming to this space or um, this space could... Or if a merchant came here, if I brought the merchant here, hey, I could get this trade good for free. If I come over here or over here, I can interact with this, which says process a trade good for free, which I'm totally going to do now. Hey, trade good, why don't you become now? I've got stuff I can send to more than one city. That's pretty nice. Thank you, merchant. And now we are going to set sail. And now I should say, I, I, I misspoke. Any city will take any trade good. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's upside down again. I mean, this city will take anything, but it's just they they would like to have sugar. They will give more rewards if I send sugar to this city. And so here's the deal. Boy, is there a city that wants both sugar and um, cloth? Yes. Uh, Venice, or Venetia over here, wants both. But for me to reach this city... Oh, it'd be expensive. I'd have to pay one coin, and then two coins, and then two more coins. It'd cost me five coins to get all the way over here, and then do a double delivery, making them super happy. If this were a little bit closer, I have to admit, I'd be pretty tempted in one um, delivery to deliver both. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They, they want M4s. They want pottery. Is there one that... Oh, yeah. Oh, this one. Constantinople. If this were way over here, I'd probably do the list and deliver both of them and get super huge benefits. But that's even further away. It would cost so much to sail all the way over there, and I've only got two coins. I'm trying to be cheap. So... And I, by the way, I'm not frozen out of here. I could still come to... Um, what is this one? Argel? But if I'm the first to go to this city, this city, this city, this, 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 any other city, I get a royal seal, which basically counts as a coin or another star when I need it. So, I think, I think, I think, I think, I am still going to stick with my plan and go. Uh, there is a little bit of a risk. No, there's not. Yes, there is. There is a tiny risk. Because if I come to Florence, well, actually, oh, no, it doesn't matter right now. First of all, if I come to Florence, I'll get the seal. I'll get whatever I get for delivering one or two goods. I will immediately get a ceramics, which is nice because I can sell those for four. Or I can use them to get four victory points um, when I'm doing um, building or, pot or uh, poetry or what have you. These over here, I do not get unless there's income. Now, I'm out of time. I would need to have one extra action to be able to get my ship from here to consolidate so I get that income. So I'm not going to get that income. To be able to have pulled that off, I would have had to use one of my builders to, uh, say, build something that would let me consolidate. Wasn't available. Not a viable thing. So I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to get this income this turn, unfortunately. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to stick with it anyway. I am going to... Uh, pay one coin to go along this shipping lane. I'll get this seal, which I can use later. So this costs me one coin to get there. And I can give up to two goods. Uh, they'll take anything, but they want sugar and they want amphoras. I'll just go on ahead and give them my sugar, and I'll save my clothing for a delivery later to, say, this city, or maybe that city, or that city. Um, because for every good you get, you get one um, point and one star. But if it's in demand, you get two points and two stars. So this was in demand. And now this basically goes to a discard pile. Um, if this bag ever runs out of goods, we refill it with the goods that have been used over the course of the game. But you thought this was the name of the game. It's actually a bag, a bag of goods. All right. So I'm coming over here. I am getting two points and two more stars. So now I'm really set. I'm, I'm Sultan's going to be my best friend. And I get one ceramic immediately, which is a the highest value building material there is. And now if I had one more turn, I'd come over here, I'd be able to get this income at the end, but that'll have to wait till next year. So it's not quite as good as I said earlier. That was my last action, because my other guy's just uh, home asleep. And now we know Yusuf says, I'm sending my merchant out, and my merchant is going to go right over here. Yep. 
to this space. And interestingly, this is the, you know, get some money, do some stuff. Yusuf's not going to do any of that. Yusuf just says, I'm going to get a point. And, oh, I'll take the good if it's there, but it's too late, Yusuf. I beat you to it once more. But Yusuf just gets a point. Okay, so there we go. And, folks, we have finished the first year. All our workers are done. It's interesting. In the first year of five, this is a worker placement game because we're just putting all our workers on the board. But now that they've been deployed for the rest of the game, this is a rondelle, uh, which means my workers that are already out there are now going to have to start clockwise moving around and um, dealing with whatever gets in the way. But before we get to that, we've got some end of year income to do. And folks, if you would like to see that, well, maybe you want to hit that eye up in the top right corner screen and go to the extended playthrough, where I'll finish out this year and I'll play through another year, maybe even two, depending on how far we go and show you how the game continues to evolve. Or you can go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.